Hello, Anatomy students. In this podcast, I'm going to review the muscles of the trunk using one of the large anatomy models from our lab. Let's begin with the muscles of the anterior trunk that are primarily respiratory muscles, helping out with respiration, both inhalation and exhalation. These are the external intercostal muscles. These are the most superficial of the intercostal muscles that help in respiration. Intercostal refers to the muscles being between the ribs, costal being a common term to reference the rib bones and the rib cage. When the external intercostals contract, they elevate the ribs and enlarge the thoracic cavity. This results in an overall increase in thoracic cavity volume which results in a decrease in air pressure. So this allows for inhalation as the atmospheric air outside the body is at a higher pressure and that moves down a gradient, a pressure gradient from high pressure to the lower air pressure within the thoracic cavity. When the external intercostals relax, they depress the ribs and reduce the overall volume of the thoracic cavity. This results in a decrease in volume within the thoracic cavity, but an increase in pressure. And this allows for exhalation as the high pressure air within the lungs is exhaled out to the lower pressure air in the atmosphere outside the body. Just deep to the external intercostals are the internal intercostal muscles. These muscles are the innermost muscles in between the costal bones, and they're shown as the lower layer of muscles here on the model. The internal intercostals are also used during respiration, but in particular during exercise. When these muscles contract, they depress the ribs and reduce the overall volume of the thoracic cavity. This results in a higher internal thoracic pressure, which results in a forced exhalation as that higher pressure air is exhaled out of the body to the lower pressure atmosphere. This is the pectoralis minor. This is located just deep to the larger superficial pectoralis major and directly superficial to the external and internal intercostal muscles. The origin of the pectoralis minor is located on the anterior surfaces of the sternal ends of some of the upper ribs, in particular ribs 3 through 5. It inserts onto the coracoid process of the scapula. Its major action is abduction of the shoulder. As we see here in the model, the shoulder and the arm is abducted away from the side of the body. Another action of the pectoralis minor is respiration, and in particular, forced inspiration. When the muscle contracts, it's elevating the ribs, in particular ribs 3 through 5, and as those ribs are raised up, the thoracic cavity volume increases, which decreases the pressure, allowing for inspiration of the higher pressure atmospheric air into the lungs. The diaphragm is a large dome-shaped muscle that separates the superior thoracic cavity from the inferior abdominal cavity. The diaphragm is a major muscle of respiration. When it contracts, it's going to flatten. So this dome-like parachute shape flattens down, which increases the volume of the thoracic cavity. That decreases its pressure, which leads to inhalation. When the diaphragm relaxes, it raises up to the dome-shaped appearance as shown here in the model. When that happens, the volume of the thoracic cavity is reduced, but its pressure increases, which leads to exhalation.
Let's now explore the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. This is the external oblique muscle. Oblique means at an angle. And this most superficial muscle of the abdominal wall has its fibers angled more towards the midline. The external oblique is found on both the right and left sides of the body's abdominal wall, but here in the model it is just shown on the right side. It's been removed on the left side, so we can see some of the deeper abdominal muscles located just below it. When one side of the muscle contracts, it laterally flexes and rotates the vertebral column. Lateral flexion is when you bend to the side. When both sides of the external oblique contract, they compress the abdomen and flex the vertebral column. That movement is when you bend to touch your toes. Just deep to the external oblique is the internal oblique. This is another oblique muscle of the abdominal wall where its fibers are oriented at an angle but this time they're oriented more laterally out towards the hips. The external oblique has been removed on the left side of the model so we get a full view of the internal oblique. The actions of the internal oblique are the same as that of the external oblique. When one side contracts it laterally flexes and rotates the vertebral column and when both sides contract they compress the abdomen and flex the vertebral column. This is the rectus abdominis muscle. Rectus refers to the vertical straight alignment of the muscle fibers. We can see the rectus abdominis well here on the left side of the model since the external oblique has been removed. There is a left and right side of the muscle and it's commonly referred to as the abs or the six-pack muscle but technically it's one two three four five six seven eight technically an eight-pack if you count all the muscle bellies within the body of the muscle the actions of the rectus abdominis include flexing the vertebral column as when you bend to touch your toes but it also helps in compressing the abdomen during situations such as childbirth, defecation, urination, as well as during exercise and forced exhalation. The last of the anterior muscles of the abdominal wall is the transversus abdominis. And to see this muscle on the model, because it is a deep muscle, we have to turn the model over where we can see the fibers of the transversus abdominis running across the abdominal wall. Transversus refers to this horizontal fiber alignment as the muscles run across the width of the abdomen. The action of the transversus abdominis is compression of the abdomen. When these muscles contract, it's similar to tightening a belt as the abdominal wall is constricted and pushed in. When we remove the abdominal wall, we can see that the transversus abdominis runs from anterior laterally to the posterior abdomen, where we can see the continuation of the transversus here on the left and right sides of the posterior abdominal wall. Located just medial to the posterior belly of the transversus abdominis is another muscle of the posterior abdomen called the quadratus lumborum. Quad is a reference to its roughly rectangular shape. The origin of the quadratus lumborum is on the iliac crest of the coxal bone. We don't see it here on the model due to the presence of the kidneys, but the insertion points of the quadratus lumborum are on the last rib, the twelfth rib, 
and the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae 1 through 4. And that's where the lumborum part of the name comes from.